All right, last <clears throat> lesson of chapter four. So consecutive integers are whole numbers that follow each other in order. So consecutive integers, list them. So two, the next number after that is three. 13 and 14, x and, well, x plus 1. Consecutive even integers. Okay, so the next even after 4 would be 6. Negative 20 is a tricky one. It's negative 18. It's not negative 22. It's negative 18. Because look what we're doing here. We're adding 2. We're adding 2. And if we add 2, that gives us x plus 2. Now, odd integers, think about it. 7 becomes 9, 7 plus 2. 79 plus 2 is 81. And again, this is going to be x plus 2. So these are exactly the same because this variable could be an even or an odd number. But to get to the next even or odd number, regardless, you must add 2. All right. The product of two consecutive number integers is 156. What are the two numbers? All right. Well, our first unknown is x. All right. So it says two consecutive integers. So the next number after x is x plus 1. Think about this. If this was 6, this would be 7. But if I multiply those, I get 42. So it's not 6 and 7. And you could guess and check all day, but really, we can set it up, say this number times this number, because the product equals 156. All right? And then we just solve. So now we're going to distribute the x and get x squared plus x. I'm going to move the 156 over, and I'm going to factor. Now, to take a little bit of time to guess and check, so I'm going to teach you a little trick here. Calculator's not working. Let's try it again. There we go. So take the square root of 156. Okay, and that's a good place to start. Okay, and so you know, just start around there and just start testing numbers. 12 times 13. Well, I got there the first time. Except, look at the fact that since this is negative, all right, they have to add, they have to differ by 1. Well, obviously they do. So I have x and x. I have 12 and 13. Okay. Now, since I want more positives and Fewer negatives, that's my answer, okay? And my two answers are 12 and negative 13. Okay? So, technically, it says the product of two consecutive integers. It doesn't say uh, um, positive or negative. So, technically, they both work. 12 and 13 and negative 13 and negative 12. Because these are both consecutive sets of numbers. All right, the product of two consecutive even. Okay, so again, my first number is x. My next one must be x plus 2. Because if this was 6, that would be 8. And this times this equals 288. So x squared plus 2x minus 288 equals 0. My little trick again, I'm going to say second square root and do 288. Whoops, try that again. Second square root, 288. So, I'm just going to start. Like 16 and 18 or 17 and 19. Okay, so let's try 17 and 19. 17 times 19. Because remember, I want them to be only two apart. Well, that's not it. How about 16 and 18? There we go. So, x, x, 
16, 18. I want the bigger number to be positive, right? Which means I have 16 and negative 18 as my answers. And so my two choices are 16 and 18, but also negative 18 and negative 16. Those both work, okay? Because it did not specify positive or negative. And those are both consecutive even numbers that multiply to give us positive 288. All right, area. Remember, area is length times width. I can draw a W. I really can. So how do you write the expression 5 more than X? Well, literally 5 more than X. Or if you like to have, you know, X in front, it's 5 more than X. 3 more than twice X. Again, literally step by step, 3 more than 2 times X. Or you can put 2x plus 3, either way. 4 less than 3 times x. This one's a tricky one because it's 4 less than this. Okay, biggest mistake is people will do this. And that's wrong. That's actually 4 less 3 times x. But less than, you're comparing back to something previously. All right. Length of Joe's kitchen floor is four feet more than the width. Okay, so length and width doesn't matter which one you call. Okay, um, let's say this is the length and this is the width. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so the length is four more than the width. Well, that wouldn't make sense in with the picture now, would it? Because the length is longer. So this is four more than this going this direction. Okay, so that means if my width is just W, then if I add 4 to the W, I have my length. The length is 4 more than the width. Okay, here's a clue. Whatever follows this is the letter you want to start with because that's what it's being compared to. And now we're just going to do what we did before, W times w plus 4 equals 117. So I distribute my w, w squared plus 4w, move the 117 over, and now I'm going to go to my calculator and do my little trick. Now remember, this time it needs to differ by 4. So I'm going to take my square root of 117. Okay, so I'm going to try 10 and 4. Well, hopefully you can do that in your head. I'm sorry, 10 and 14 would be 140. So how about 9 and 13? Oh, there it is. I may have gone the other way and tried 11 and 15, and then I just kind of bounced back and forth around those numbers till I find them. So again, I got 9 and 13. So X, X, 9, 13. I want more positives and fewer negatives. Now in this case, it is different. Even though it does not say they must be positive answers, we don't measure in negative numbers. Okay? So therefore, my width is 9 and my length is 9 plus 4, which I plug in right here, 13. And you can also write it like this, 9 by 13. All right, classic ball thrown up in the air. Okay, so you know it's thrown up in the air because this is negative, which means it goes up in the air, hits a high point, comes back down to earth. Okay, now what is the height of the ball after two seconds? All right, well, the height, if this is, this right here is time. Okay, so if I just plug two in, I will get my answer. And a quicker way to do that would be, as I've said before, let's use our calculator. So I'm going to say negative x squared plus 14x plus 5. So there's it going up in the air, comes back down eventually. 
it means it came down off the chart, okay? So like if I looked and see, you know, where it starts to come back down, you know, it's going up 38, 45, 50, 53, and it's coming back down. And you can see between 14 and 15 seconds, it's going through the axis again. So that's why it was off the chart. We couldn't see it. Okay, so where is it at two seconds? <laughs> 29 feet. What is the maximum height of the ball? Well, A, B, C, negative 1, 14, 5. Okay, so opposite of B over 2A. So opposite of B over 2 times A. So the opposite of 14 is negative 14. 2 times negative, times negative 1 is negative 2, and that gives me 7. Now, this is not the height. Remember, this is the x-coordinate, all right? The height, this is time, and this is height. So I need to go to my calculator and look and see where is it at 7 seconds, 54 feet. Now you see on the calculator how it's 54, and on the other side it's 53, 53, and then it's 50, and then this is the next one's going to be 50. Sometimes you can see on the calculator, you could have just found it, but sometimes it doesn't show up like it might be seven and a half seconds. So you just can't use calculator. You have to be comfortable using this formula. All right. So what was it again? It was 54 feet. Okay. So the maximum height is 54 feet. And when will it be there? Seven seconds. When will it be back on the ground? Now, the calculator does not tell us that exactly. We know it's between 14 and 15 seconds. So that means we need to factor this to find the intercepts. One here. Now, this was kind of a nasty one. You can kind of tell there's nothing that's going to factor to multiply to 5. It's going to add up to 14. So you're going to have to use a quadratic formula for this one. So using the calculator, I am fine if you say between 14 to 15 seconds. All right, projectile motion, which is what we just did, um, basically, or similar. Uh, but this is the actual formula for anything used like in physics. So H is the height at any time. T is that time, like I told you before. This right here is the initial velocity, like how fast it launched. And this is the initial height. So like if something is launching from the ground, the height is zero. If it launches off of a 10-foot platform, that number would be 10. So a diver jumps from a diving board that is 32 feet above the water. The initial velocity is 16 feet. Write the equation, all right? So height as, a, height as a function of time equals, this is always going to be this, all right? The initial velocity is 16 feet per second, and he was 32 feet above water. How high will they be after one second? So you can just plug one in there. You know, 1 squared, negative 16, and um, 1 times 16 is 16, minus 16 is 0, plus 32. So, easy one to do, but we're still going to put in a calculator because we're going to need it later. So, negative 16, x squared, plus 16x, plus 32. So, where is it in one second? I meant to hit second, but there you go. Thirty-two. So here's interesting. If you see zero thirty-two, so he's standing on the platform, he or she, at thirty-two second, thirty-two feet above, jumps in the air, and in one second is also at thirty-two feet. That means the vertex 
is just a little bit above 32 feet and happen between zero and one second. And you can see they're going to hit the water at two. Okay, two comma zero. So how high is the diver after one second? 32 feet. How long until they hit the water? Two seconds. Okay, and it doesn't ask us to do this, but let's do it for the heck of it. So the opposite of B over 2A. So that's negative 16 over negative 32, which is one half. So, which kind of made sense, zero and one, halfway was one half. So they hit the height at one half second, all right? And if you plug that in, you can find out what the height was. It's probably gonna be like 33 or 32 and a half feet, pretty close. All right, Jason's throwing a football with his dad. He launches the football from a height of something feet in the air. Let's, I don't know why I printed it like this, but this will be six feet. All right, with an initial velocity of 72 feet per second. So what is the equation? So height as a function of time is negative 16 t squared. All right, initial velocity 72 t from a height of six feet. Where are they? Where's the ball after two seconds? So we're gonna put this in the calculator. So y equals clear negative 16x squared plus 72x plus 6. Okay, where's it going to be after two seconds? 86 feet. What's the maximum height? So we're going to do opposite of B over 2A. So negative 72 over negative 32. And if we divide down the calculator, it's 2.25. So this is one why you have to be able to do this because you're not gonna be able to always find this. 2.25 seconds. Sorry, that's the next one. Whoops, got ahead of myself. That's how long it will be. Now, we actually have to plug that in to find out what it's going to be. So we need to plug 2.25 in right here and right here and crunch the numbers. So a little bit more work, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take 2.25. I'm gonna square it. And then we'll multiply it by negative 16. Okay, that takes for here the first term, all right? And I'm gonna do 72 times 2.25. I'm gonna add that to 81, or negative 81. So minus 81 gives me 81, plus six is 87. So 87 feet. So let's look at our calculator again. If you see in two seconds, it's 86 feet, three seconds, it's 78, so that makes sense. A little bit after two seconds, it went a little bit higher, just one foot higher, then it started to come back down. And how long until the ball lands? Okay, um, well, that's gonna be between four and five seconds. Okay, and then graphing it real quickly, um, it started from a height of six feet. So uh, I'm going to count by twos, two, four, six. Here's my six feet. Okay, so using this um, in one second, it's going to be at 62 feet. Um, so probably counting by twos is not going to be good enough because I needed this to fit. So how many spots do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, I needed to get up to about 62. So if I do 5, each one of these is 5, okay, then 6 seconds is going to be about here, or 6 feet is going to be right about there, okay? 
and then um, in one second, 62, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. 62 is going to be right about here, right? Um, and then 2 seconds is going to be 86. So I didn't even do high enough. So up here and here. So you can tell about, and we said between 4 and 5 seconds, I believe. Previous one, four to five seconds. So it's going to hit one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, somewhere in here. All right. So we're just getting a general idea of it right there. And that's it.